Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and welcome to Raw Talk episode number 243. This one we are calling The Dangers of Photography. Now, this is an important subject that's going to come up later in the episode after photo news. So if you're just logging in now and not watching it live, you can click one of the links down below to show you where that's going to start. But I think it's a very important discussion to have at this time because there are a lot of dangers to photography. And some of the things that are dangerous may not even seem to be dangerous, but could turn out to be an issue. So we want to have that discussion later on. But now, uh, Stephen, welcome. Hello. Welcome. Todd, welcome. Hi. And now I'm going to cut to Dan. That that was how I was going to you know, I figured. W- work around. <laughs> I was going to be like, let me give Dan some kind of warning Bring it around town. that we're here. So, Todd, we're, we're live now. We're, yeah, we're, we're totally live. We got people. We're good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we, we, uh, we've got our box running and hopefully working. And so we appreciate you guys showing up here live. If you've got questions for the flying solo portion, please put capital, all capital question and then put the question in after. Scream it. And if we're having a discussion, a topic of some sort, and we're having a topic discussion, way to speak English, Jared. <laughs> we're having a discussion of some sort. Um, if you want to chime in into the comments, if Todd's reviewing and you have a really good point, Todd's going to bring it up, and we'll give you props for bringing it up if you fit in there, and it makes sense. Am if I forgetting anything, Todd? No, I mean, and, and you know, the questions you ask during, if they're not relevant to the conversation, they're just general questions. I will pick up on those at the end when we do flying solo. I'll address a lot of those non-relevant questions at the end if I pick them. Super chats we'll address at the very end, and uh, let's get into it. Let's do it. Wait, who? You don't say let's get into it. I say. Let's I just get into said it. it. I just said it. Okay, Todd. So. What? so the, the, the first thing I want to talk about today is I had a photo shoot with Dave Leno. Remember when he called me during the show and I'm like, that's probably Dave. And it yes. was Dave. Yep. Right. He, he asked me if I could come and photograph him proposing to his girlfriend. And he was going to do it at 6 ABC. You know, the new 6 station. ABC, Dave Leno. Wait. So when I used to work at Alan's camera, hold that thought. Dan, cut to me, please. Oh, boy. There was a guy in Philly named Mark Howard. Right? He was oh, yeah. on 6ABC forever. So Mark used to call the store, and I'd be like, Hello, thank you for calling Alan's camera. This is Jared. Hey, may I, how may I help you? Jared, it's Mark, Mark Howard. Howard. <laughs> and then I'd put it, I'm like, Please <laughs> hold, Mark. And I'd put him on hold, and I'd be like, Alan, it's Mark Howard from 6ABC News. <laughs> he would always call. Nice. It was just kind of funny. Yeah, Mark he, Howard. He, he liked photography. Anyway, so Dave asked me if I would come out and do it, and I, the first thought... That always goes through my mind is no, because I always like to say no. Ask Maddie; she knows that everything. Every time she asks or says, suggests something, I say no first. He's got a busy. He has a busy evening counting likes and, <laughs> and comments. Dave has also helped us out a ton, though, and I feel like we do owe him. That didn't cross my mind at all. Okay. What well, crossed? You definitely my, owe him. Yeah, Jared doesn't feel like he owes anybody <laughs> you anything. Definitely owe. No. Him. What, what crossed my Not mind is I always want to shoot. He's asking me to shoot. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. And so I He's did. A good dude. And so the thing was, he's going to surprise his girlfriend. This is the layout. He's going to tell her that he has to get some credentials for something at 6ABC. That's where he's picking him up. And while they're there, he's going to get a tour of the set. And while on set, he's going to propose. And the, the, the TV wall is going to say, Tori, will you will marry, you marry me? me? And so for me, I had to... Oh, yes. For me, Jared, Jared? <laughs> will you marry me? <laughs> we haven't heard that voice in a long time. Jared? Oh, that voice. <laughs> that voice. Uh, oh, that's a that's a that's a deep joke. cut. Yeah. Um, so in the studio, I have I have to hide behind the green screen because there's nowhere else for me to be if they're going to come in and have a tour. Do you ever like think about putting your hair down for like a surprise shoot like that? Uh, I thought about it after I was there. Yeah. That maybe just to be like more Afro hidden puffs, like Afro she, puffs would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that would be good. But uh, one thing I said, I, I made a vlog inside, so I had my vloggy camera, and then I figured out I might as well because they wanted to try to get audio because they recorded it so they could play it on the news, and I think they ended up playing my video on the news, which I sent to them. But I set up the 6D Mark II with the 16 to 35 and the Rode Video Mic Pro <laughs> shotgun mic from 20 feet away. I get it. I get it. What was I going to do? I know. So I put it under one of the TV cameras on the floor. And I said to the guy, I'm like, if they ask what this is, it's a social media, behind the scenes social media camera. That's cool. So I hit record when it was time. Um, I did some test shots. You're going to see the vlog because Dan edited it. I haven't watched it yet, but it will be out. Um, It's emotional, the vlog. Is it? Yes. Did you like it? I liked it a lot. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Cheer it up a little bit. Really? It's a little sad. 
well, because, but happy because sad. of me? <laughs> no, no, no. No, just the whole proposal. You see everything going down and Dave's speech and everything. Oh. Yeah. And then why is it sad? Because Jared's so lonely? Yes. Is my dad calling? <laughs> is it him? Yeah, dad. See? Hey. We're on the show air live. Every Friday, oh, 3 p.m. I just, uh, I just emptied out. I'm, I'm in the process of emptying out the closet in the office. Yeah. And, and there's this red... Did I mention that we're live? Thing. Put it closer to the mic. Yes, I know you did. It's harder to hear. So I just wanted to tell you that there's a Nikon camera in this bag with a couple of lenses. Yep, still live. What Nikon camera is in there? I do not know. Where would I find out? The front of the camera, it would tell you what it is. All it says is it's an N60. Oh, I know what that is. I bought that as a yeah. gift for mom. That's what I thought, that you probably bought it for mom <laughs> because it's in a USTA All bag. right. Can we go back to the live show? A couple of lenses. Why don't you go back to the live show and, uh, and I'll play Dad. Just uh, take your time. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Dad. Oh, I, I love how he announces what he's going to do just like you. Oh, my God. I'm going to let you go so <laughs> I can go make some sausage and lentils. So I, I answer the phone because my dad, it's kind of funny. It's a, on, a, a well, gag. It's, it's funny because right before the show, Todd and I discussed how we need to make a slide that has like uh, on the phone right now. <laughs> I have Mr. To, Poland. I have to get, maybe I'll just do a screen grab of yeah, the, the phone so you can do it. So I was talking about the vlog's going to come out with Dave because uh, I photographed it. And I did s test shots and, all right, let's show some of the pictures. Can we show some of the pictures, Todd? Yeah, Best let's show how you ever. crush. Boom, <laughs> nailed, nailed it. it. Crush that. Well, <laughs> perfect photos. Keep going, Todd. So I, look. One, Nailed I know that it. that's the position I wanted, right? Nailed it. Well, that's the position I this wanted. This one right here. Yeah, I wanted that side position. The problem was I had to – and we'll talk about the blinkies in a second. The, the problem was I had to hide behind the green screen. When they were giving her a tour, she came over to the green screen, and I was worried because, like me, I always look behind things. If she was going to look behind the green screen and see me. So luckily she didn't. That's why I was thinking the hair down would be like – Pretty good. Don't look at the guy behind the green screen, Stephen. You know, I mean, it's just. Don't, <laughs> don't worry know, is, about is that the common guy. sense. Don't go back <laughs> no, there. That's where the weatherman hides. Wizard of Oz. Wizard That's where of he Oz. lives. Oh, a Wizard of oh, Oz reference. Oh. Nothing to see here. <laughs> um, and uh, da, 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 da. so when I got, I, I started to go out when Dave. I didn't realize he was going to do like a monologue. Yeah. So he does a monologue. Come on, it's Dave. And I start sneaking out, <laughs> and I realize he's not doing it yet. So then I duck down behind one of the three cameras. <laughs> and so when he finally gets down on his knee, I can mm. get out between to take photos of it happening. But he's, you'll see it in the video. He was turned properly, and then at the last second, he turned straight on to me. And so I couldn't get the ring or, the, or that. Did you guys go over beforehand? There was only so much I could say. Oh, okay. Because you didn't, I didn't know where it was going to happen. He didn't know either because it was, it was the live part. And then the blinkies. The, go back to the first blinky shot. I took sample photos. You're going to see this in the vlog. When I took the sample photos to, to, on set, they didn't have this congratulations, Tori, or uh, Tori, will you marry me thing. If that was up there at the beginning, I would have seen the blinks, the flicker. I did see the camera say flicker, and what I thought was, well, studio. But what didn't cross my mind was this is a TV studio. There's no flickering lights. So the flicker warning went on, but you I didn't actually it. switch to flicker to Detection. No, flicker mode. was on. That's flicker detection. If it's well, it gives you a, that's flicker a flicker warning, but well, you have to physically turn the button on I, or the menu. I'm pretty sure it's on on my D5. Is it? Yeah. Because I have mine off at all times unless it actually gives me the warning. Then I'll pop. Well, it on. apparently it wasn't on. I don't. I don't recall. Um, I'll have to check. It's at home. It's, all, if it's off by default. But I. But I'm. But it. I don't think. Well, it. It told me flicker, and I just didn't think anything of it. And in the sample picture, I didn't realize on the little three-inch screen that I'm looking yeah. at that there was actually an issue because they had a bluer. They had a 6 ABC logo up. A darker logo. Yeah, which didn't show it. But the TVs on the left were actually dead. They were gone. If I, I would have noticed that, but I didn't. So the issue was my shutter speed was too fast. And it didn't sync with the, the refresh rate. Should mm. have been at 1 60th or 1 100th. I like to shoot faster for the same purpose of... If she jumps or does something, I can freeze that. Which is what the last proposal, yes. that one you photographed, she jumped. So I do get that. Todd, go to the group of them in front of the, the board. It's like three or four down. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. So when I took them over to this board, you see it's not as bad, right? Yeah, it still looks you like... You adjust your shutter I, speed at this point. I looked at my camera, and I'm like, blinkies, blinkies. 
why is why is why did I get the flicker? I'm like, quickly, she's standing. I went to two fiftieth of a second, and if I went further, it probably would have been better. But it's just you have a split second to make the deci- to, to shoot. Uh, can we go to the the iPhone photo that the other woman took? And no, nope, that. nope, that's not it. But that's the ring. It's a very nice ring. Yeah, it looks nice. There, that's from an iPhone. From the other lady who had the the better spot, she actually had a good kneeling shot too. Did um, Dave end up posting your photos or the she iPhone? She posted photos? mine. Six ABC posted my photos. They posted my video. Dave also posted these. I have the graphic. If I want to go in and digitally manipulate it and put it on the screen, will you do that? Though? I won't. I'll probably give it to somebody else. I was else gonna say to you do. definitely won't. If do somebody that. wants to volunteer or do that, <laughs> I'll send the the. I'll put the images up, and you can have fun with it. Did you get a chance to at least test the Tori Will You Marry Me white logo on the no. screen beforehand? No. I Did you know it was going to happen? That I knew that was coming up, but okay. they had I didn't add, or they had it up. For, like, what's it going to look like? I'm like, oh, okay. Then I took a picture the other way with the other logo and just didn't see it. Just Lesson learned. Botched it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm sharing it instead of just burying it and, sh- and not showing that a, a mistake was made. Look. The moment was still captured. She loves the pictures and she's happy with them She because it's a moment that was there. Plus, the cameras were rolling and all of that. Um, but I, the part of sharing it is so that if you're ever in a situation with the TV screens, just know you may need to drop your shutter speed much slower or put on the flicker detect mode. I got to see if the flicker was on or not. Yeah, I know with the D750 or no, the D850s, you have to physically turn it on. With my 5D, I have to turn it on. It's off by default. I have to look because I don't see why I would have it off on my D5. Maybe it is off. Well, Maybe I would think it'd be think. off because then it would stop you from shooting really fast if you wanted to shoot like a high frame rate sports yeah. or concerts or something like that. Oh, no. It, oh, that's it might, you know, delay your response. So that's true. It's good and bad. It works great for certain situations, but I wouldn't keep it on at all times. So that's that. Well, the biggest question is, did she say yes? <laughs> well, she's kissing him, right? I would assume so. Oh. In that well, photo. I mean, it could have been like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Yeah, she, Next um, time. you'll see in the video from my camera angle, you can hear his monologue and the question and the uh, yes. Uh, it's a great... Leno, Tori, will you marry me? <laughs> It's a go, great. Go, 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 go. <laughs> it's a great little speech he put together. I saw a clip that Dan <laughs> put together with the vlog, and it's, it came out really well. Well, it's funny when I got he there. Did good. I was in the control room because they were doing the news. Yeah. So the control room is three people: a producer, one person here, and one person here. Sure. And I'm sitting there just in not in awe, but like amazed at how it runs because they're doing the same things we're doing when they're doing the the short 20 second. Uh, clip that's going to go up on the news later, like the the pre roll thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they up. Oh, you're two seconds over. We got to do it again. It's all like right. NASA. When I was at my buddies at ESPN, it was like it's just all this stuff, and it's like it's that buttons it's just everywhere. on a giant giant level. Yeah, and so watching them like nail everything, like take camera one, but they weren't doing the same normal call like that. But she's just like prepping one. Taken one, put it in there. Let's go with this package. Let's do that. Ten seconds back from commercial. Here we go. Here, listen. I can, I can get Dan doing it. Take on one. Take on two. Take on three. That's terrible, Todd. Sorry, sorry. That is insensitive. Sorry. My bad. Stop it. I know. Um, okay. Did you shoot anything this week? I did not shoot anything. I mean, I shot video, obviously, for us, but right. I didn't shoot anything personal this week. All right. Uh, uh, before we get into photo news, yeah, I want to dig into. I was looking for a photo. Well, first of all, congrats, Dave, if he's watching. Yeah, congrats, congratulations Dave. to Dave and Tori. That's awesome. Congratulations glad, glad to Dave. Glad you said yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was digging up a photo for the segment later about uh-huh. the dangers of photography, and I found some uh, awesome, some awesome photos of me. Figured I'd share. Boom. Yes. Fuzz yes. magazine that was at the office in two thousand and five. We carried this thing up this like two flights of stairs straight up. That was my t- look at those jeans. Are look those short those jeans or, or are those long jean shorts? Shorts. <laughs> they, they are hard. And my shirt's inside out. Yes. Uh, of course it is. Look at this guy. I mean, now here's the biggest one I have questions about. Screams this 90s. Right here. Dude, look like, at those sweet chops. I want to know what is ha- First off, what is this? Is so that, is that guess, Wolverine? I guess what I was doing was a leave behind similar to when I. I called it a scrapbook in there. I guess what I was doing was giving a thank you for having me at the Advantage Championships and giving me this opportunity to photograph this, and I put me on the letter and printed it out. So in your thank you, you made it all about you. <laughs> weird. Uh, That's yeah, weird. and I shot this photo also. That's weird. 
That font Fish is Island. super the professional. Font is perfect, though. I'm pretty sure that's I mean, majorly yeah. cropped if you look at the grain. Oh, yeah. It because looks like it. it. It was a horizontal shot because I put the camera down on the bag and took a... You cropped? And took a picture. This was with film. <gasps> this was film. Who are now, you? Now, are those, are those mutton chops? So, what it is, Todd... You must have really liked Wolverine. Todd, yeah. What it is... Do you have adamantium, adam, ad, adamantium in, your, in your bones? <laughs> no. So, what it is is you draw like a triangle here... And have a goatee. What the guys at the at the did somebody say that was what you're? Who said that you're supposed to do that? I decided to do it myself. <laughs> you didn't double check with anybody on that. I, I guess. was trying to be cool. Huh? Did it work? Lesson learned again. Lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> I was always trying something weird. Uh, oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> what do you What do you guys think? You like that? You like that facial hair? I love that. You should definitely bring that back. No, I'm bringing don't. it back. Bring it back. Please. So anyway, that's that's the beginning of the show, Stephen. Pluggy McPluggerson. Pluggy McPluggerson. This show is brought to you by My Gear Vault. That's weird. The best way to input, organize, and protect your gear. Download it for free right now at MyGearVault.com. If you have not done it just yet, please do. If you're looking for insurance, because I got an email from a guy who had $18,000 worth of gear stolen from Ooh. his car. Oh. And he has, he has coverage through another company, which shame. we'll talk about at another point. But I don't want to mention what company it is. But he, has, he had basic coverage, and they're not covering it. Oh, man. And so he just upgraded his coverage to what would have covered it, but that doesn't help him in the past tense. So he lost everything. Uh, not everything because he didn't have everything with him, but he got but all scammed. That. He got scammed pretty yeah. bad after oh, somebody no. stole it and then tried, and then somebody saw it and then called his number to tell him they have his bag, send them money to, for shipping. That's, That's a shame. And, That's cool. and that. So the reason I bring that up is there's an insurance tab right inside of my gear vault which you can get an insurance questionnaire filled out and you can get a quote and basically be bound within the same day if you want to get insurance. And I will tell you, I've seen some policies in the $350 range and you can break that up over like 10 payments. It, it always depends on how much gear you have. But if you've been looking for insurance or you weren't sure about it, get coverage. If you have a lot of gear or even as little as $4,000 in gear, it's going to protect you. Still a lot of money in gear, yeah. It is. Because just think, one, one occurrence gone and that 300 that 20 some bucks a month is a good peace of mind well worth it yeah, yeah. you getting in the photo muse i think it's time well what? no i mean what are you got gear of the week next we're gonna do gear of the week oh next. thanks for changing oh, yeah. up the order gear of the week <laughs> yeah uh, is gear of the week up on the screen it is now that's gear you can put in your in your my gear vault oh yeah this is this is um, a mount converter from sigma has my name on the front and it's due back on april 10th we actually have a lot of time with this one, which is nice. Okay, so what is it? If you're What's in the box? This is the MC11 adapter for <laughs> Canon lenses on Sony mounts. So it's built by Sigma to attach to a Sony to then to attach, attach a, Canon a Canon lens, lens. on the front. Uh, and it, I think you can also get a mount adapter for Sigma as well. So I wanted to try Not these out. Not Nikon, though. Wanted to try it out to see how it worked. Yeah. No, you can't get the Nikon one. For the uh, Sigma version, yeah. And I asked them to send it so we could test it because we have a bunch of those Sony cameras here to play with. Yeah. Want to see how it reacts with video, how it reacts with photos, because I'm not a fan. Like, a solution is not an adapter, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Somebody going, well, I'm going to switch to, well, to well, Sony because I have all this not a Canon gear. More for stills, I would say. Video, I think I would still use an adapter, but stills, I don't really feel comfortable. Sure. Especially shooting high frame rate. So... Anybody that says that their solution to switching to Sony and using Canon glass is to adapt it, natively that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, you might as well wait for something like Canon to come out with their own mir mirrorless camera. I think we're at the juncture where if you have a lot of gear, a lot of glass for Nikon or Canon, I don't know that I'm jumping ship to Sony Just in the next eight months or in, before 18 is over. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll have a better understanding on whether or not your lenses will be worthwhile more on Nikon or Canon. And when Nikon or Canon comes out with it, I am pretty sure there will be some sort of an adapter if it doesn't natively take your lenses. But the difference will be is that the native adapter won't lose any functionality or, or lose anything. Um, Question is, will it take them three versions to come out with the perfect full-frame mirrorless camera like Sony, or will it be one and done? Nikon, I'm sure, will put everything into their well, full-frame mirrorless camera. Let's but. look at this. Let's, let's think about this for a second. Nikon is the one that put out the full-frame D3. Yes. The first full-frame 
and technically the first with HD video as well with the D90. Oh, well, I'm just throwing that was it out a Jello there. Fest. But, but yeah. still, the first. Right. So Nikon got the D3 right. Yeah. Like, we were waiting a long time from the time that the D2X was announced and the D2H until the D3 came out, and we were all ready to jump ship. I was ready to go to, to Canon at the time. Were you? Oh, absolutely, because Nikon hadn't done anything. Mm. Canon had, like, a 1D Mark I, a 1D Mark II, you know, stuff like that. They were pushing it forward. Now, those were 1.3 time crop factors. Yeah. They the weren't APS full frame. H yeah. And sensor. when Nikon struck with that, they got it right. So I don't think Canon and Nikon can afford to play. Well, Canon's already done it. They the have the, M, the M50 and the M5. Those are little toys. They have but the whole EOS M line, yeah. They're you need there. to, and, and Nikon tried to with Nikon One with a freaking one inch sensor. Stupid. That's the only thing. They don't have the APS C sensor lineup like the EOS M line. So it's a little different. They need to it's make there. sure that they don't shit the bed. Yeah. On the first go around of a pro camera. For sure. Because this, this A7 III for two grand. I mean, I sent them my wish list from last week. So hopefully that will be the camera. We'll see. Who'd you send a wish list to? Oh, last Nikon week. Nikon and Canon. Yeah. So anyway, that's that. That's gear of the week. That's that. Uh, thank you for Sigma for sending that. We have to send it back. In yeah, we got to play with it. We got a lot of Canon glass to play with. Todd, do you have something to say? Well, I was going to say somebody had a question about teleconverters. Um, mm. If you Jared's um, favorite. If you <laughs> would um, recommend a teleconverter or not, if you're on a budget just for the extra reach. Uh, no. Uh, I'm going to say here. I'll say Brandon no. Brandon Panagan. Panagillan asked. The that. reason I'm going to say hold on, hold on. It, it, a lot depends on what you're putting it on because when i bought my first teleconverter from abes of maine from the back of shutterbug magazine yes the guy on the phone sold me the one that had four elements or instead of two elements and he's like it's going to be so much better and it was, was it a lot a more expensive 2x mm. or it was a 2x converter gotcha didn't ask me what lens i was putting it on a 100 to 400 fi- sorry 100 to 300 5.6 yes okay so this was the problem you put a 100 to 300 5.6 with a 2x converter on it. What's going to happen? You have to you lose two stops of light. 5.6 goes to f8, f8 goes to f16. I'm outside shooting 400 speed ISO film at a baseball game at f16 now. Yes. It's so dark through the viewfinder <laughs> and the shutter speeds are so slow. It's high noon, it's just black through the it viewfinder. It was like 3 o'clock in the afternoon and I couldn't see anything. <laughs> yeah. Because little did I know that I would lose two stops. Nobody yeah. explained this to me, and I was out that bullshit teleconverter. Cuts everything, man. And it's so i rather have you crop an image than use a teleconverter because, and, and when I've even used it on pro glass, slows down the focus and causes lack of sharpness issues. Even though Nikon and Canon do build it into some of those new lenses, that's a drop-in teleconverter. It's a little better. I just don't like teleconverters. I don't want to lose quality. I personally have the 1.4x version 2 teleconverter from Canon, and I will say I've only used it one time. At Made in America to At shoot Jay Z. Made in America to shoot Jay Z. Was, was that what it was? It's exactly what it was. All the way in the Cha-cha. back. You were on. You were on the stool. I was on the stool, just Papa. trying to get the shot because this is a big moment. I just wanted to capture the moment, and I didn't care if I was the quality was degrading. Or there was a lot of light. Was there any moment. flicker? Did you, <laughs> no did you, uh, did you, but you were um, using a 7200. But I was using a 7200, so it made it like a 350 or something at that point, and, uh, or a 340. And I got the shot, but I've never used it again after that, so I almost wasted, I don't know, what's that, two, 300 bucks to get that teleconverter? Yeah. I kind of feel the same way, crop, especially with the high megapixel cameras these days, but hmm. it's not a terrible idea to throw one in the bag if you get it used or cheap or something like yeah, that. Yeah, good question, though. Thank yeah, you, Todd. Great question. Thank you for yep. picking a good one. Yeah, thanks, Todd. Well, yeah, it, it, I, I will say it, it. Usually, by the time we say it and people see it, it's about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. So by delayed. the time they reply, sometimes we're beyond it. So if you ask your questions right away, sometimes I can see them before you guys are done. Okay, Todd, thanks. That's all. Just hey, why don't we, uh, why don't we get the photo ig- news? I'm not ignoring we, anybody. We have a photo news thing to put up on the screen? Booyah. Look at that. First up for photo news, a rare Leica camera just earned the title of world's most expensive camera ever, selling at auction this past week for nearly $3 million, 2.4 million euros to be exact. Uh, the camera was a 1923 Leica Zero serial number 122. I should have brought my Leica in. Only one of 20. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is going on? <laughs> what? That is freaky. What is going Ooh. on? Why is it moving? It's probably a GIF or something, I bet. 
But this is only one of 12 remaining in existence today of the original 25 uh, that were produced. Now, nice the auction... Ring. The auction was held at the 32nd Westlick Camera Auction in Vienna, Austria. Uh, the camera had a starting price of about half a million dollars, going all the way up to the winning bid in under a minute. Here's them actually doing the bid. Nine? The winning bid went to a Nine? private collector from Asia as well. Uh, Westlick says it is the highest price ever paid for a camera at an auction. Which is too much. Yeah. Now, Leica mm. owner and chairman Andreas Kaufman, who was actually the gentleman you saw earlier, uh, holding that Leica. Oh, with the ring? Yep. Notes that the, yeah, this guy, that the world record price of 2.4 million euros shows that the myth of the Leica brand continues to grow. Yeah, you know, you know who bought it? Peter Lick. Peter Lick. <laughs> 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 and the next, the next West Lick auction will be held in November, and I'm sure there's going to be another rare Leica My there. My camera will be there. Selling for a ton of money. I think it's such overkill gibberish. But, but at the end of the day, it's the, all about peop bragging the people that have beyond fu money yeah at some point it just doesn't matter like if you've got 400 million dollars and you want to drop three million of it on a camera it's like 20 bucks so be who it. cares if you're jeff bezos and you have a hundred billion dollars i couldn't imagine a hundred billion dollars and you want to buy that 20 million dollar studio in new york you're gonna just be like make it happen because you have a hundred billion dollars yep Todd's that's banking on that, right, Todd? You just yeah. bought a lottery ticket. Yeah, and ticket. I just bought lottery tickets. So. Oh, shoot. Yep. Is that, yep. That's tomorrow. Yep. Maybe um, I'll go do that, too. Don't you do it because I want to win it Should we get an office pool again? Do you want to do the office pool? We Maybe. all put in $2. Nope. I already have the winning ticket. Yeah, but then you put in, <laughs> we all put in $2. Nope. I'll, you put guys, in two, I'll put in $2 if you guys, I'll do it. If you guys win. I'll go across the We'll put in $2. Yeah. I meant to bring my other ticket from the last time it was big and cash it because it was like uh, I had two Powerballs on it, so I would have gotten a couple dollars back from it. Yeah, like $4. Yeah, yeah, but I'll, I'll get some tickets. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, half a million dollars. dollars. Four hundred and sixty million dollars. Yeah. Todd said and he's going to hire us when yeah. you win, right? Yep. Cool. It's going to be really awesome. lonely in here if I win. <laughs> <laughs> crickets, right? Great. Where are the crickets? You want to buy the factory? <laughs> yes. It's going to sound like. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> could you see Todd come in with a freaking pimp cane? I could just see and him. Then He's going to come in. He's going to get the cash cannon Literal out. Literal money guns with real money. He's going to wear, he's going to have a suit on with a hat and a cane. He's going to get pull. He's going to pull up in Super some kind flashy. of 1990 um, no. uh, uh, Oldsmobile Cutlass. It's going to be pimp as no, hell. No, I'd get like a, 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 a luxury electric car. Yes. I'd get a Tesla. I'd get a Tesla. Why Whatever. not? Yeah. And then speaking of Leica cameras, Amelia Earhart's personal That's Leica. Uh, Earhart. Excuse Earhart, excuse me. Excuse me is now for sale on eBay. Uh, photography enthusiast Ian McDonald is holding the auction. Uh, the description notes how the camera has been in McDonald's family possession wow. for 85 years. Uh, he says, everything is authentic. I've known this camera all my life. I would like the camera to go to a museum if possible. How does he know it's authentic? That's the thing. Hey, so hey here, guys, here's, here's, the thing. here's an authentic camera. Uh. The camera has not been properly authenticated, so it's quite a gamble if you actually do bid on the camera. Uh, McDonald says, he acknowledges this in the, in the description, saying, I have absolutely nothing to prove that this was, in fact, Miss Earhart's camera. Do you have a picture of her holding nothing. the camera? Can we ask the astronaut if his grandfather knew anything about this camera? And he doesn't have the research uh, that would need to be done to confirm such. Oh well. In that uh, case, I have Steven Spielberg's first camera at, at my house on the show. Let's, let's <laughs> bid on it. Mm -hmm. He says, I have absol absolutely no idea how to do that myself. From memory, over 40 years ago, my father told me that she found it fiddly to load. Miss Earhart may have studied photography. My grandfather had such had said as much and described her as a keen photographer. She preferred a Kodak folding camera, as I recall being told. That's what he says about the camera. Uh, he goes on to say how the camera was gifted by her to a family member in 1933 after returning back from a trip to Chicago. Uh, and it's basically been in long-term storage ever since. Now, this camera is in working condition and comes with a card that appears to have been signed by Amelia, who included the personal signature with the camera when it, was, when it was gifted. Now, if you're willing to take this gamble, which it is indeed a gamble on this supposed rare camera, it's now up for a whopping $70,000. Oh, let me get or right buy on it now that. if you want to get and it. And do you know how much eBay gets? 10 freaking percent. I'm not sure if I would trust an eBay auction, especially for a camera that has not been authenticated. What if it was yet. at the Westlick auction? Probably. That's where it should be, at the Westlick auction. it'd be like auction. $2 million as well. But we actually did uh, interview Amelia Earhart's photographer's son, 
uh, NASA. Grandson. Grandson, I'm excuse, excuse me, NASA astronaut Randy Bresnick. Yep, which is really cool. I didn't. I was not Except aware. We did of that not fact. ask him any of those oh, really? questions. That I was, was not was aware of that fact in my grandson? research that I did. Wow. It did not say that his grandfather was the personal photographer of Amelia Earhart. He brought it up a couple of times, but he didn't specifically say who his grandfather was photographing. Yeah. yeah. But really Todd cool. has a Todd just raised his hand. Well, I got to break in and give a shout out to Zach Kurtz because he sent us fifty dollars for lunch. Zach Kurtz, uh, wow! Again, if Zach Kurtz sent us fifty bucks for lunch and thanks, says he's man. loving the Raw Talk shows. Well, well actually, again. he said he's living these Raw Talk shows, but I think he means he's loving them. So Zach Kurtz has given us like a hundred bucks. <sighs> he's about that life. Thanks, he's Zach. About that life. He just bought that that camera as well. So congrats. Ah. <laughs> That's right. He's making it rain. Thank you. And then we've got famed photographer Eddie Adams' insane New York City photo studio is now up for sale for a price tag of just $19.95 million. Well, there you go, Zach. Pretty much $20 million. Yeah. There you go, Zach. Uh, <laughs> Adam, Jeff Bezos. Adams is widely known uh, for his Pulitzer Prize winning photo of the execution of a Viet Cong soldier. Uh, he passed away in 2004, and his wife, Alyssa Adams, took over the building. Now dubbed Bathhouse Studios, since the building was once a public bathhouse, the giant 13,298-square-foot building was purchased by Adams back in 95 and is located in Manhattan's East Village. Uh, along with the residents on the second floor, the building has two studios, one being Studio A with 20-foot Wait, ceilings. Wait, is the other one Studio B? How did you know? Shocking. Amazing. So smart. Uh, that one has 11-foot ceilings in Studio B. It Throw also it it comes equipped with a 2,200-square-foot rooftop deck and a large equipment room as well. And a spokesperson for Bath House Studios says no one from the photo industry has expressed interest in buying the building currently. Danny Clinch should buy it. He should. So most likely it'll what be caught space. up. It'll be bought up and transformed into a proper living space, New York style. Oh, do you know what that's worth? That's got to be worth at least... 19.95 exactly. million dollars. <laughs> exactly. That would sell for a ton in New York. Exactly. My well, loft in New York would be uh, probably five million. million dollars. Definitely a couple million. Well, I mean, if you took it out of the ghetto, yes. But How many mean, of your lofts could you fit into this building? 13,000 square well, feet. Well, it's 2,140 square feet. Wow. Can you imagine how many sets we could build Dude, if that, that was our Fro Factory? The Fro Factory is 31 or 3,200 square feet, oh roughly. Wow. We can add another probably 5,000 on, the, on the other lot That's over awesome. there. But, um, but then where would the crackheads go? Well, they don't, they don't go in there anymore because we have a lock. Good point. And Good point. a steel gate. But this, this is what I was saying about Jeff Bezos. Yeah. He could buy this just because he could. In, in Washington, D.C., he bought an entire block that was, I believe, an old library. And, wow. the, and the locals were worried cool. that it would be bought up by a developer and turned into high-end luxury apartments. He bought it, and uh, he bought it. I don't know. It was like 20 million bucks, but it, we got $100 billion. You have $100 billion. It, is li it may be like... Living that life. I would love to know the math on it. Is it $20, or is it more like $2? That's crazy. Well, let's see. There's... 20 million. How many million in a billion? Oh, wait. Now we're doing math? It's a thousand. So there's a thousand million in a billion. So he's got 10,000 millions. <laughs> and that's 20 million. Divide it. That's six zeros. And Welcome to math talk, everybody. <laughs> oh. Uh, I, I actually I did see photos of this building before he bought it up, though. And it, look, here it is. I have a picture right here. <laughs> <laughs> but You're yeah that, that's basically the people that were outside the building uh in the early 90s in 95 oh uh, it was wow. it looked pretty bad spray paint everywhere yes. windows broken it wasn't great so they put a lot of work into that building uh, and then moving on we have introducing the vivian mayor of russia let me try and get this name right masha eva shintsova yep crush that born in 1942 and died in 2000 after battling cancer the unknown photographer never showed her work to anyone even her family then late last year her daughter asia 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 asya is it i don't think it's asia if it's a asya asia I, I think that's asia yeah i think that is asia, asia too no 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 asya asia Okay. Asia. Asia. Maybe it's Asia. 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 It's not Asia. I don't know. There's no way it's Asia. It's a Y. It's Russian. I don't know. I'm just making shit up. Uh, so her daughter and her daughter's husband stumbled upon several boxes of negatives and undeveloped film in their attic. 17 years after she died? 
Yeah. Now, like, how, how many times did they not go in their attic? I guess never. Now, over 30,000 scanned images have made their way online, and they still have a lot more to put up uh, showcasing MASH's uh, beautiful work. But I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I almost call, I called shenanigans on it as soon as I read it. I said, this is fake. As soon as I read it, um, but then when you start looking at the images, you're like, The images seem well, legit, and there's photos of themselves thrown in the mix, time, too. But, but how does the family not know that she was taking I mean, she has a camera. So here's what her daughter says. Her daughter said, Of course I knew that my mother was taking pictures all oh. along. What was striking is that she never shared her work with anyone, there's not Jared even her right family, there. including myself. What was myself. her Instagram? <laughs> uh, photographing everyday life, though, from her personal relationships to her surroundings. Uh, Masha's work was never shown because she sincerely believed that she paled next to men and consequently never showed her photography. That's what Russia to does to you. Exactly. Now, speaking of communist Russia at the time, where unemployment was a criminal offense, oh, uh, Masha oh. remained jobless and was given a choice between prison and incarceration in a me mental hospital, which she basically took the latter, went to the mental hospital. Uh, over the course of 10 years, she was locked away and gradually broken by a system that administered drugs to mental patients. Oh, my goodness. Uh, her daughter has since been approached by art galleries asking to exhibit the work. They also put a whole website together. What was that guy's name who bought the uh, other one in, in Vivian Mayer's and then basically gave it up oh, because yeah. some douchebag is suing, yeah. saying that they own it? Yeah. So the first exhibit is scheduled for this summer in Vienna. There's no details just yet. Uh, hopefully a book will follow as well. I'm sure there will be a book. You can actually buy prints through their website. They do have an FAQ section. Are they noting signed? that? Uh, <laughs> are they signed? Yeah. No. <laughs> No, of course not. Just like checking. Um, but yeah, hopefully a book will come. Like Vivi Mayer or a documentary or something. Yeah. I want to know the story it's behind really that one. I want to know the story behind that picture. Well, he's right a fan he was another he was this a writer. Was one of her one of her boyfriends was a writer, yeah. a poet or something. Yep. And then the other guy, I don't know if you have that picture. The other one was her husband. No, the, well the other one was another guy she would date. Well, not this guy. This one was uh, her husband at the okay, time. Okay, and there was another one where she's taken She's hiding behind the guy taking pictures. This guy, I believe. Oh. But it's, it's not this photo you're talking about, but this is the guy you're talking this about. This is the Russian John Lennon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Duh. Smoking a black and mild. And then we have uh, rumors are surfacing about how there's a prototype of Canon's first full-frame mirrorless camera being tested in the wild. Uh, the source claims to have seen the camera and that it's an all-new body design, I would assume, because it's Who the first full-frame mirrorless. Uh, similar to the Leica SL, they say it has a 1.3-inch monochrome LCD top screen, which I don't really care about. Uh, the flange distance also looked to be sh too short to have a native EF mount. There were also no markings on the camera, no lenses attached, so no word on what type of mount it has. The uh, source also notes that they had heard the continuous burst rate, and it seems like it was shooting around 10 frames per second, and no other specs were released at this time. Again... As all rumors, take this with a grain of salt. I just don't know why the person didn't take pictures. Like, uh, hey, I saw this. I'm, my friend showed me this one-of-a-kind well, mirrorless I'm camera. My I'm, friend. I'm sure his friend was like, don't tell anybody. Right. I'm so showing not you and I'm NDA. Does he tell somebody? But, he, but it's like, at this point, you might as well have just taken some photos of it and shared it with the world. Probably would have had to sneak them, though, I'm sure. Hey, uh, I got this. He's like Kristen Wiig on SNL. When, when, don't, don't tell anybody. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> hey Todd, speaking of your mug, what is that your uh, coffee mug? Yeah, that's the one I left at the. Oh, shoot that's the one you yesterday. left at the photo. Where we're shoot, like, hey, don't I leave this home? at the photo shoot, Todd. I, I leave it everywhere that we specifically told you about like five times. It's like it's it like there. if you flip it over to the bottom, it has his name, Todd, and his phone number. Here, let me flip it over. God damn it! His mother-in-law wrote it there. It looks it looks like that thing's been to hell and back. It's so cracked. And it, it, up. it fell out when we were um uh, when we were doing go karts at the beach. I had coffee on there. <laughs> oh my God. You had coffee on the go kart. Oh, and then uh, switching gears completely, our big story of the week, and it's a tragic story at that. Um, a helicopter crash during a photography flight this past Sunday in New York City's East River, tragically killing the five passengers on board. Now, the helicopter was owned and operated by Liberty Helicopters, but the tickets were purchased through Fly Nyon. Uh, due to the helicopter having its doors off, the five people were all tightly harnessed in for safety reasons so they could lean out and take photos, which ultimately did quite the opposite, causing their demise. 
Uh, the five victims included one journalist, two tourists, and two helicopter employees. The crash was allegedly caused by the emergency fuel shutoff switch being engaged during the flight which the pilot, the sole survivor of the flight, says was most likely caused by a camera bag hitting it. Oh, I, don't I still happens. don't know where uh, this is located, this switch. I always thought it was above the well, pilot, but it did must I, be on the ground. So you know when we were flying last week, right? Yeah. Two weeks ago? Yeah. And you know that big red do not touch thing that says emergency. do not touch? Yeah. I mean, I thought about it when I was sitting there. I mean, your what bag. What would happen? Your bag Well, my was bag was right. on the floor, but... That thing up above, he did use it. I think it's like a, a break thing at the very end because after we landed, he pulled down on that at the final, at the very end. But I could only imagine what would happen if you pulled that during flight. But it's, it's a big red thing above your head that says, like, you're not going to hang a camera strap on it. Yeah, that's, that's why I don't know. I mean, if there's a pilot out there in the comments section, if you could let us know where exactly well, uh, an emergency fuel shutoff switch is. It's different on every helicopter. Is it? And... It's possible that some helicopters, the companies build maybe a box around it so that you can't accidentally hit it. I would it. think it would be like a I don't know where the heck switch. it would be that you can accidentally hit it. Yeah. So we'll have to wait for the NT, NTUSB to act on it. NT, yeah, the crash. And, he, and, you said, uh, uh, then, yeah. and Stephen, you said that the, the, the flotation things popped out, so but they didn't work. Let me get into that. The crash actually appeared to not look that bad. There is video floating around. We didn't want to show that on here. Uh, but it was the straps that held the passengers in position while the helicopter began to take on water. One of the six inflatable pontoons on the helicopter that you see right here didn't properly deploy on time as well, not keeping the helicopter upright. So basically it hit the water, the one didn't deploy, and it flipped. Uh, the Times writes, with the current in the East River running at about three knots and the downed helicopter lashed to a uh, lashed to a tugboat, rescue divers had only one option. They resigned themselves to drifting with the current as they tried to cut five passengers out of the helicopter. Mm -hmm. Now, our friend uh, Eric Adams, who we interviewed on Raw Talk before, was actually on another flight at the same time. He saw some of those photos earlier in the story. He snapped some of the pictures of that particular helicopter in flight. He says they uh, all had the same safety briefing, but he chose the quicker 15-minute flight, and they chose the extended 30-minute photo flight with the doors <laughs> off. He says they provided knives to slice harnesses, but didn't physically point out where they were once we had them on. And he says they also had uh, flotation devices as well, but they didn't basically tell them, hey, this is where the knife is in case of an emergency. So well, they hit the water and I, and it's 40 degree water. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. say that's what the refrigerator is like. Oh, man. Yeah, Todd. Um, the consensus online uh, in the comments says the, it's, in the, it's on the floor between the seats. Wow. The cutoff switch. So, so it is right where we... That's the overall that's where, I don't know where people. the one was where we were flying. Yeah. Well, if, if it is located on the ground, your, your bag when we were flying is actually right next to that, yeah. which is scary to think. That's scary. Now, also, Senator Chuck Schumer is now calling uh, for the FAA to, sus to suspend Liberty Helicopters' operating license. The company has been involved in at least two other crashes in the past 11 years. Well, I mean... Yeah, uh, I made a video about this. You can see it over on the website or also on YouTube. Yeah, uh, very delicate video, but I wanted to showcase that. It's tough to talk. Do we about. have any of the photos of me in the harness? Yeah. We have that. We have the video in the other. I, I ran it in the other thing where I'm harnessed. I mean, here's here's oh, from you can use this Maverick Helicopters in Vegas. I wore this harness in Vegas when we flew with flew with Miss Hatton. Yes, and that was a cannon trip over Las Vegas, and so they put this thing on you. And and this is Maverick Helicopters. They say now they only... And this is a couple of years ago. Well, that's a couple of years ago, but they say that their uh, rules are the only way they will use a harness is if somebody specifically requests the harness and... Experienced. And is experienced and knows what to do. Makes sense. Um, this harness, you're in there. You put your legs through the two straps. You put the thing... You put your arms over this, and then they literally, down here on the bottom... Attach you to the helicopter. The floor, yeah. And so you, I didn't know about a knife. The, the hard part is you're, you're tethered directly in, in the your center back. of the back. There's no way in hell I would have been able to figure out what to do. I mean, imagine being in that situation. halfway underwater as well, trying to cut yourself loose. It's a, it's a scary thing. I don't want to think. I did think about it. It didn't and, feel good to think about. Uh, especially because we were just on a helicopter two that's weeks terrifying. ago. That's with terrifying. With the doors off. Yeah. yeah that's also with this, I remember the briefing, the safety briefing lasted 
I don't know, at least a half an hour. And they, I think it took them about 10, 15 minutes just to put the harness on you. Yeah. That's how secure it is. Uh, you're, you're, you're locked in. And I, even when I was locked in, I didn't feel like leaning out of the helicopter. Yeah, you still didn't really and lean la- out. And last, uh, two weeks ago when we flew uh, with Maverick, the type of seatbelt that it was, there's – it's already attached in one spot. It's a five-way – Well, it's four. Four. You're so right. it's already attached in one spot, and you bring up two from down below and one back over the shoulder. Yeah. So you have two over the shoulder with a simple two two. twist – of a knob, it pops right open, even with the doors open. And the pilot was specifically saying, don't lean out, don't put any weight, because God forbid that come undone, you're, you're falling, falling right out. out. Yeah, He, he said risky. that several times. Yeah, Todd. Well, we've got a comment, Jedi of the Republic. He said the real takeaway is to please play, pay attention to the safety briefing. Yes. And if you have questions, ask them. It's a risk you take no, I got, go I got, up, so. I get that. Yeah. I, I get that. Like, safety briefing. We went and rode the go-karts last week. There wasn't exactly Zero. a safety briefing. They didn't even tell you how to how do operate. I, how do I get out on. of the damn thing? Yeah. You know, I had to wear these handcuff things, so uh, they didn't explain what the handcuffs were for. And basically, they if you roll it, your hands are going to go like this and get crushed out. If you have it on, they're not going to go f- past this. Oh. But the thing is, yeah, we can go through that safety briefing, but... I didn't know there was a knife attached. I, didn't I had know no idea. That. I don't remember them saying that, but I also wasn't part of that specific safety briefing. I was actually filming you at the time because I wasn't harnessed in for this right. ride. And also people say that when you go on a commercial flight, do you listen to the I was briefing thinking about anymore? that too. Now, like, I, I think- mean, it's the same shit every time. This is how you put a seatbelt on. This is where the mask comes. If the mask falls, put it on your face first and not a baby. You know, it's just like, yeah, I... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I mean, what's it's scary horrible. about this story is that I'm sure when they crash landed, the landing actually looked fairly soft. It looked like a decent landing and it looked survivable. Well, I'm it sure was when they survivable hit, because the the pilot got out and I'm sure when they hit the water, they're like, OK, we're safe. We made it. We landed. And then that's when, boom, you're going under and you can't. I mean, it rolled fairly quick. Yourself. Yeah, it did roll fairly quick. But so, it, it didn't seem like it flipped like all the way over. Yeah, but I even couldn't if it, tell. Even if it did, you can activate your, your flotation device. It could pull you up to the top, possibly. Now, not not saying I know what would happen or no. saying that they could have done anything different. But the hardest thing there was that they were strapped in so that they didn't fall out. And, and unfortunately, it the, kept them locked the, in the seat. The fact that, again, it's it's 40 degree water at that point, too. I'm sure you can only last that much. You can't last as long, you know. The shock. Yeah, the shock. Yeah, you're, you're going under. So it's scary stuff. So with that, this leads into with that discussion, it leads into what the title is, which is the dangers of photography. And we've gone ahead and done some, uh, written down some different things that are dangerous to photographers and creatives, and we want to talk about them. Um, the fir- the first thing we we could talk about the helicopter r- sure. again. Let's do it real fast. Is that if you plan on going into a helicopter again? It's most likely that you're going to understand that situation is you're not shooting tethered. Or if you're shooting tethered, there is a f- way that you know how to get out of. Yes. I mean, that's a, unfortunately what happens after a tragedy is it brings more awareness to whatever the issue was. Um, I don't feel like flying in a helicopter again anytime soon. We've done it three times. And I mean, every time it's, it's an amazing experience when you're up there, but it's... I was tethered in for this one. It's still a very scary... Uh, the, the one we did in Sedona... Uh, that one, it almost felt like a, a normal seatbelt that you wear on, like uh, in a car. It yeah. didn't feel like you were that secure. Yeah, that one in Sedona, they didn't. There was no briefing of any kind. Nothing, no safety briefing. You just went in the helicopter. They dropped you off, and you went right up. Yeah, if I you didn't never like flew that. in a helicopter before. They didn't even check my seatbelt in that one. They didn't even go around like the roller coaster check and double check that you're strapped in. Now Maverick, on the other hand, they've always been very strict on safety, and yeah, I, I do feel comfortable flying with them, but. After a story like this, it doesn't make you want to fly anymore. So one of, one of the other dangers is putting yourself into situations that you probably shouldn't be. Yes. Uh, and, and one of those is train tracks. Yeah. And we, we've talked about this a million times. Live train tracks. And this is just brought up just to show you as an example of train visual, tracks. Yeah. These are train tracks that are... Op- this is Auschwitz. These are not operational at this point. Um, I just do not agree with any types of photography in, around, or on train tracks that are active or even not active because unless you've got permission well, to be there. I mean, if it's clearly overgrown tracks or sure. something like that, it's obvious that if there's not going to be a train coming. Yes, if it's not there. But a lot of people, like, what, what happened in the movies, Todd, with that movie? 
Oh, that oh, shoot, Sarah Jones? The shoot. They were on a bridge. Yeah, they were on a train track bridge, and, and she got killed. And I think they just recently settled late last year. Um, it's like $13 million between the producers of the movie and, uh, and the, the, the train company. And fault was kind of spread across everybody. But just at the end of the day, stay off. And if, if you're with a company that insists on doing X, Y, and Z that puts you in danger – Tell them to tell them to pound sand. Yeah, I, it, it, yeah. It, it is. It does come down to that because sometimes you may be afraid to lose the job or something. But the worst part would be losing your life. Your life. And yeah. so, if you feel that you don't want to be in that situation, like if Stephen didn't want to fly in a helicopter, then he'd be fired. <laughs> then he no. wouldn't fly in the helicopter. Yeah. You're, you're actually very good with with safety on the job. It's just. Which is I don't want to well one I don't want to put myself in harm's way yeah. and then I have to worry about you guys. I do want to note too that I was looking up some of the facts around uh, deaths caused by train tracks. Uh, according to Operation Lifesaver, 274 people were killed by trains in 2017 alone, wow. and that number simply goes up every single year. I think that in 2016 it was like 264, so it just keeps going up. There was also 870 people injured. Uh, in 2017 on train tracks. Did it say how many were photographers? It didn't specifically say photographers, but I'm sure a lot of them, a good chunk of them were probably photographers. So there's there's those situations. And then I, I want to talk about a situation like street photography. You may not think it's dangerous, but if you photograph the wrong person or you, you're in a wrong, a bad area and you just think you're you're immune because you have a camera and you're doing this job and you're this, to be honest, a white kid in a in a bad neighborhood... And you're just going around. It, this, the, this guy's going to get you. Well, beret guy over here. Yeah, oh. tell us the story. I'll, t- I'll tell you the story. We're on a, on a field trip from college to New York City to go okay. see something. Um, we're in Central Park. So this we're, is a whole group of photographers. Well, it was, we were, it, there were three of us or four of us in one group. Gotcha. Everybody was spread out until we were going to meet somewhere. And so I had my camera, my what, F5 and whatever I had, and I'm doing photos in the park. I got some really cool things. We happen upon this guy. We're talking to him before I even take any pictures, and he was all nice and conversational. I took this picture, and I wish I had the the next one because I have the negative, but the next one is him throwing something at me. Then he spits at me. Then he lunges at me to come attack me. What? This is after you at least... We were just talking. Yeah. Yeah. So Greg Cazillo was with me, who is six five at the time? I wouldn't want three, to mess with Greg. Three forty, three fifty. Yeah, you know, a brick shit house of a human. Someone nice to have by well, your side. Well, Greg was right time. next to me. He stepped in and from his bouncing, just fish hooked him like this and threw him backwards. Oh wow! Yeah, he threw him I didn't backwards. Realize you guys got physical like that. Well, he did because the guy came after me and then did he, he knock his bray off. No, then he pulls something from his pocket. And it was a croissant. <laughs> no. Oh. He pulls a camera. But it could have been a gun. What? Yeah. You don't know who's going to pull something on you. He pulled a camera and he took my pi- He took our picture and then ran away. But can you imagine that? That's crazy. Maybe he's some famous guy, but this just... Uh-huh. You, so I, I get you sniping pictures of a child or something like that. That I, I, I can understand getting annoyed about or upset about. But... When you're already talking to him, you befriended him. But it's New York. It's, yeah, well, it's you New never York. know who's psychologically. But you would think he would assume you would take a picture if you have all, all of you guys have cameras at that point. Look, I, it's just one of those things. Sometimes you think you're immune to anything. Sure. Like, oh, I could do whatever I want because I've got white privilege, to put it mildly. Like, you don't expect the bad, but you put yourself in a situation and all of a sudden somebody's beating you or stealing your stuff. Well, and there's putting yourself in dangerous situations like train tracks and stuff like that. And then there's simply street photography, which you wouldn't assume well, is a dangerous situation, no, but, but I wanted, it could be. I wanted to bring that up because yeah. that is a danger in photography. It's something you don't think about, well, though, for sure. You never know. I mean, if you're casing a place, somebody could, you know, you're casing it. Somebody may take a issue with that. Todd, you had something? Well, uh, one of, the, one of the, uh, the viewers, Doug Johnson, said that he got hit in the head on the side... Um, when he was photographing an amateur hockey game. Huh. Oh. And now he, he wears a helmet. So I wanted to bring this up. I also wanted to say what situations have you been in where it's either not meant to be a dangerous situation but turned into one yeah. or a dangerous situation that you put yourself into? I didn't think of the hockey one, but I've 
so shot. He's saying punched in the head, Todd, or I, uh, hit I with like a puck? I think he just puck. got hit in the head maybe by my, a maybe puck, by a stick, puck or a stick. Things are flying something. around. Yeah, okay. Let me tell you this. Bruce Bennett, way back in the day, if you shot at uh, Nassau Coliseum, which was New Jersey's hockey rink, I believe is what it was, Nassau Coliseum. Maybe that's a new one. But between the benches and at the ends of the, at the, ends of the benches, they had a photo pit. No glass. So you would see these hockey, these photographers mm. they look worse wearing than the helmets. They were wearing yeah. helmets, some oh, of them. Yeah. Bruce took a puck in the head one night. Oh. He wasn't wearing a helmet. And I think they had to cart him off. Oh, man. He was bleeding, and I don't think he got stitched. Or he didn't think he got to come back to shoot like most hockey players would. But that is – I've sat between the benches. I've sat in the penalty box at a professional game. Scary. Uh, well, you're protected by glass, but those guys are <laughs> – Freaking fast! It was a hockey stick, by the way. He clarified. Hockey stick. Okay. Hockey sticks can get you. Yep, they can get you. So that's a da- that's a situation that can turn dangerous. Or recently, the uh, you've seen the, the the videos of a a, a rally, a, one of those car rallies where the guy's taking yes. pictures and the car crashes Went and out of spins control. around them. That's a perfect example of a dangerous situation. And you have to think in these situations. It's not saying like. You just have to think of where you're out if something happens. But even if something happens, it's happening so fast that you have no time to react. Yeah. Which makes a lot of the photo situations dangerous. Um, I, 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 you know, we have the basic ones, rock climbing. Of course, like Jimmy, Jimmy Chin, Chin. The guy's out there risking his life on mountains. We've got the Grand Canyon, for example. I mean, we That's did, literally on the edge of the Grand Canyon. We did like the these, entire... Like these boneheads? So, for example, Todd and I and Jaffe, who filmed the Frontos Photo Show at the Grand Canyon, were literally maybe five to ten feet away. I had... Todd, I think I had you behind me I spotting. think we were holding each other's hands here because it was so nerve-wracking. Yeah, I think you were spotting the, me, though, because I couldn't the other see ones? behind me. You have the other ones? Of I Jaffe? have some other ones. This is Jaffe almost on the edge. I mean, there's a little ledge under... It's, it's fairly bigger than He's got than about five looks, feet behind him, but... but you're, it's scary. You're done if you fall back. The dynamic range is really bad on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is also sunrise. Where Five they, in the morning. Yeah, this complete hard, shadow horrible, in the canyon. Yeah, he did that. I'm like, what are you doing? Jaffe's a caveman. He's, in, he's uh, he no fear. Get, he do you have the ones of you three sitting on that other lot, that one I where don't I think refuse we have to do it? that in here. No, the only one I have is, is, is this of you. Yeah, but it's 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 literally like somewhere over in this area back here where we oh, actually yeah. went down to the ledge and put our feet Scary. over, nope, and we're I all literally it. hanging on to each other, tethered onto each other. <sighs> it, it makes me nervous just talking about oh. it again. And then here's just a random stud shot, and this is just the most it's epic just shot we're, ever because we're super cool. Yeah, watch, go watch the Grand Canyon show if you haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, so that was that was that. Um, and I do want to talk about that real quick. How. Uh, National Park spokeswoman Kirby Lynn Shedlowski says about 12 deaths happen every year at the Grand Canyon. On average, two or three of those deaths uh, are from falls over the rim. And then according to MyGrandCanyonPark.com, the odds of dying at the Grand Canyon are about every one in 400,000 visitors. Which is crazy. It's scary stuff. Um, anything extreme, obviously skydiving, <laughs> photographers, You know, I crazy. didn't even think about that. I sky- so I jumped out of a plane... And I did too. Paid the hundred bucks to have the guy do Me the too. photos and the video. Yep. Did you, dude? They just jump f- ten times a day. Yeah. I mean, isn't one enough? Like <laughs> it's risky as hell, and they have people packing their parachutes that they they have to trust. Yes. If it doesn't open, you're yeah. That's that's risky yep. as a photographer. Um, I forgot about skydiving photographers. That's extremely. Well, dangerous. I've got I've got another good one here from uh, Aaron Warnick. He's a um, a photojournalist. And he says an, anar- an anarchist protester dumped a bottle of some nasty uh, bodily fluids on him. I didn't uh, think about that one either. Photojournalism in general. Yeah. Yep. Covering yeah. protests, rallies, everything. And yeah. He, said he, he said he didn't get a rash or sick, but he was a little nervous about Combat it. Combat photographers? That, yeah, with putting yourself in those situations, you have police could mistake you for somebody else. For sure. Or just clump you in with everybody else. The rioters could... Go ahead and yeah. turn on. Well, they you. usually have like media pe- uh, vests or something on, right? Great. But you know what? Anything, if anything, that's almost a like a target. Well, I've seen yeah. that on protests around the world. Like sometimes things get rowdy, and the ne- they sometimes they turn on a photographer. Tear gas gets that gets shot out. Yep. Rubber bu- Israel. They got rubber bullets, which can kill you. And I've seen the guys shooting music videos, and the cops think like guns and things are real. Like the things that like are playing out, and cops roll up and pull a gun, and they're like, "Whoa, music video, music video!" Oh, I saw that clip too. Crazy. I mean, I think you just have to be aware. I mean, you have to make sure you're... Don't be stupid. Just, like, know your surroundings and what you're doing. 
There, there's also that latest craze of urban exploring and rooftopping. Honestly, you haven't heard as much about urban exploring lately. Not thankfully. lately, but it's almost one and the same though, where you're climbing a rooftop and, and getting that crane on a building that's being built and bring your GoPro up and falling to your death. Oh, I took uh, that. Uh, where did you find that? This is actually oh, on your from Flickr. The, that you know what that's from? Yeah, that's from the uh, water review of the RX100. RX100 Mark IV. What? What? Dan? What? Dan? If you've got something to say, just say it. A woman got killed by a lion because she was taking pictures. What? She was in a one of those safaris. Wow. Wow. Dan. Dan, Dan has a uh, a board uh, that he would, he writes on because like, he's going to write on the board. It's going to take him eight <laughs> weeks to write on the board and not get any. So I might as well just say, Dan, what what do you? Eventually, got? he'll put it up and we'll be wrapping. Yeah, but I do see a death almost every five or six months uh, in other countries usually. But for Those these rooftoping photographers and with urban exploring, the I urban mean, exploring thing to me, you're going into buildings that are condemned, so you're trespassing. Condemned. Not saying like I'm not a saying don't break. Um, yeah, you're, one, you're breaking the law for whatever that's worth. Two, you're you don't know what's in the buildings. You don't know what you're going to step on. You don't know what floorboard's going to break and you're going to fall through and get hurt. You don't know this stuff. And call me a wuss, call me whatever you want, but I don't like putting myself into those situations where something like that could happen. Then on the flip side, you could be walking down the street and the same th- anything could happen to you too. Yeah, I mean, like the, I get that. Yeah, everything's uh, dangerous if the, you think. But that way. but you're you're asking for more trouble if you're doing the urban exploring. And the rooftop, where you're you're, you're putting yourself the into roof a dangerous do that situation stuff. at that point. Um, what else do we have here? Any anybody else saying anything about situations they've been in, Todd? Uh, poisonous snake. Some guy uh, ran into a Animals. poisonous snake. I mean, that's what mm-hmm. Dan just brought up too with the safari ride. It's something that you could simply be a tourist, and a lion comes up to you. He was photographing birds, and and and, and a snake jumped out at him. Wow. Mm-hmm. So I I guess the moral of the story is preparation. Know where you're at. Yes. Know what safety precautions you need to take if you are flying in a helicopter, un- like these uh, other people, unfortunately. And, unfortunately, yes. And tethering is a thing. Uh, maybe don't shoot tethered if you don't know how to get out of it. Because what I've been reading and what a lot of people commented was that even in the military, they do this dunk tank where they flip up the they flip over a helicopter into a water tank, and you have to get out of mm. the belt and the harness and everything. Oh right. And and that's military trained like, that's pilots. That's military training yeah. pilots. So don't think that you, like me, I would have no way of knowing to get out of that, how to get out of that harness that I was in. I mean, it's something you don't even think about. I wouldn't know. And, and, and not you, under that pressure. That, you that pray stress. that that would never happen. Yeah. In my car, I have uh, two glass breakers. Me too. I got it from you, actually. I gave you one. You I never two, know. Two glass breakers, and, uh, and, and it includes a way to cut the seatbelt. Yep. Because I always wear my seatbelt. And I wonder if that's similar to the harness knife that they have included. I, I personally probably. don't remember a knife the same being thing. in the harness that you wore. I don't know where that was. Similar. Yeah, Todd's got a question. Well, I, I think this one's interesting. Christopher Heffron uh, said he's been clipped by a horse while shooting a- equestrian events. He was a little too close to the fence. Oh, man. And we were. And when that's we, like getting hit by a car, I would think. Well, yeah. when we rode the horse. We haven't made that video into anything, I remember now. Oh, the, the horse D850. ride. Oh, man, you riding that horse. That was funny. I got on the horse. The trainer really had no clue, that kid, what he was doing. Well, again, zero safety briefing uh, at that point. I could have fallen off and broken my neck. I think you were scared about the other horse well, the, coming so up The to other you horse was charging up to the other yeah. one. This horse started to run, and I'm like, enough. Like, I, I pull back on the reins, but I knew I didn't want to pull back too hard on the reins because you don't want the thing to. That horse rear was up. a little wild, too. Dude, Real that, wild. again, I guess I thought riding a horse would be great, but I didn't think wear a helmet. This instructor knows nothing. I'm like, well, I want to make this video. It would it seemed be like fun he, for the video. He knew a lot. He just didn't care to share <laughs> no, he, anything. He, he actually, it turned out that he never had worked with those horses and he was filling in for somebody. So, just stupid, man. Put myself in that situation, could have fallen off the horse and gotten hurt. Yeah. And then when you were walking around, he walked you over the grates. Yep. And the horse freaked out and almost so, uh, oh, flew no. me off the horse. So it's just like, all right, do we do? And then they, then Nikon gave us golf carts. <laughs> <laughs> Worst idea ever. Uh, best idea ever. And they didn't have headlights in the dark. Oh, yeah, that was, so that was bad. That's the moral of the story, guys, is like, we're all in these situations now. Just even us just talking about it, thinking of situations we've been in. Even that horse thing. It's 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 scary. stuff you don't, you don't think about until it happens. Really, I mean, there's also common sense situations too. Use common sense, but 
All right. Let's uh, let's move on from there. Yeah. And let's get to the flying solo portion of the episode so we can wrap it up. Todd, you got your questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, Doug Sanchez, Douglas Sanchez asked earlier, um, Apple Photos, is it a good option for hobbyist photographers who want to shoot raw? And why don't you ask Todd? I mean, it accepts raw files. No, it's not a good option for photographers who want to shoot raw. I'm just going to tell you no. It's not. You want to shoot raw? What, Steven? Nothing. Uh, Lightroom, 10 bucks a month, comes with Photoshop. Be done with it. I know it's still 10 bucks a month and 120 bucks a year, and it's, a, it's money to spend, and you're not buying the software, but... Is there a cheaper free version that's better than uh, Apple Photo does and Elements, not quite $10? Elements? Does Elements... Does Elements open okay. RAW files? You know, I don't know because I haven't used Elements. Yeah, Th there's a lot of free RAW converters and and editors, but I, I just I'm not familiar with a lot of them personally. I just use Lightroom. I, I think just, the ten I bucks a month is, is worth it, but I know some people can't afford it. So yeah, Silver Rush, five forty. Did you guys post the Philly typewriter video yet? No, no, that's being edited. Coming that's, soon. That's coming soon. We'll we'll have a website for that as well. We actually just went back yesterday to do some pickup B-roll. And uh, was it yesterday? Yes. We two days ago. Jared. Excuse me. We two interviewed days ago. Jared. We did some B-roll. Yep. Did a um, reveal. Did a reveal. Did a a reveal. photo book reveal. Yeah. Dan's uh, Dan's plugging away. It looks good so far. Chopping it up. It's yeah. A good yep. photo book too. It's getting there. Soon. Yep. Uh, Daniel Crota. Crody. Crody. Daniel Crody said, "Should I buy the Sony 24 to 70 f4 or the 24 to 70 2.8?" For weddings, I mean that's a simple answer. The difference is is nine hundred dollars in price. Is, uh, it, worth it? Yes. is it worth it? Is Twenty four to seventy two point eight is a hell of a lot better. I mean, yeah, it comes down to your budget. Do you really need to save that nine hundred dollars? Or I mean, if not, the two point eights all day. I wouldn't but. go with the F four uh, unless you have to go with the F four. I'm not going with the F four. Yeah, a lot of weddings. Especially low light. If you're a professional. If you're getting paid to do weddings, you're gonna want to have the right gear for the job. Right tool for the job. True Don't facts. skimp out. True facts. Uh, Jedi of the Republic, he wants to know, uh, well, he Jedi has a statement, I'm trying to start video podcasting. I currently have a D7300, 35, and a 50 millimeter, looking for a good mic and lighting system, but uh, budget's around 500 bucks. So it looks like he just needs a good mic and a lighting system for 500 bucks. Well, we've said a bunch of times whatever the aperture panels are aperture or F&V lighting. Uh, well, F&V a little more expensive. F&V is pricey. Aperture is great. The aperture, aperture lights are really great and affordable. Budget-friendly, yeah. extremely affordable. You get the bicolor lights. They're fairly powerful. The, the color rendition index is great on those. Mm -hmm. um, Mic-wise, NT-USB from Rode. Yep. Rode, if you're podcast, yeah, I, I like the NT-USB. I'm having some connection issues right now. Are it you? keeps losing connection. Huh. I don't know if that's the USB cable itself. Um, it comes with a long one. Sometimes it, that's those, long, one. those long ones can get a little flaky. You know, I, I keep looking for a shorter one, but I don't have an A USB cable anymore anywhere. We've got oh. them here. We have them. A one? I think so. Not, not the blue one. No, the A one, yeah. Well, I need one of those shorter. I'm pretty sure we have a bunch of them. We yeah, have a lot of really old random cables I need here. those. I need those at my house again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think NT USB, and then you can probably get two or three of those aperture lights with that budget, which is great. Five hundred bucks. Well, I don't know. You can get three of them. I, mean, I think they're hundred, two hundred, some buck, two thirty-four piece. Well, you can get the smaller ones. Right. You can get the smaller. There's a lot of different options. There's the big one by one panels, and then there's the smaller ones. Sure. So, what uh, else you got? Next up, Adam Johnson uh, from the UK asked the best setup for vlogging. I shoot Canon at the moment. What's Gorilla that pod? new M? Uh, what's that new M? Uh, the M50, M50 we haven't used yet, which we haven't even touched, so I can't really comment. He's looking on for that. something less than a, a thousand pounds. Uh, I mean, that's heavy, so <laughs> <Not> most <laughs> cameras are that <laughs> are much less. I was almost less. going to explain to you what you uh, were saying, but you're an asshole. Yeah. Hey, I didn't check on numbers. I didn't hear a, a, a sound horn today. We've been hovering around 800. 20 oh, people today. watching. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, we appreciate you guys coming in. Yep. Um, yeah, it's great. A hundred, a, a thousand bucks vlogging camera. Less than I mean, a thousand pounds. So what is that? Twelve hundred dollars? No, that's enough? like thirteen, fourteen hundred bucks. Yeah. It's a good budget. It. But except buying over there, their cameras are more expensive anyway. Uh, uh yeah, but still I, I think that's decent. I, I don't I don't have a best answer for a best vlogging camera yet. I mean he has ADDs, nothing, Todd, or the seventy seven D could be an option. Any rebel could be an option if it has dual pixel AF and a mic input. Yeah. Could be an option. Yeah, well, dual then pixel AF, mic input and, and the swivel screen or you know the Yep, the a rotatable scrizzle. If it's got those screen. things, 
That's a good. That's good. That's good. The M6 cannon. isn't a bad setup either. Well, the M6 doesn't have the flippy out screen. No. Yeah. And so it's blocked. Yeah, that's true. Either way you do it, it's blocked. Yeah. Another question I have is from David Stuffelbeam. He has a question. David Are you all ready for some paintball action? Yeah, we got it. Uh, keep when remembering. Is it? I April think it's soon, what? actually. W- what's the date? Uh, I've got to get back know. to him about that. Dave, I- what's the date? Um, when that yeah, pops if up. We, if we do paintball, I want to do, like, we need to have, like, GoPros on us so I can see the pain in your eyes when I shoot you square in the <laughs> no, junk. No, we're not playing paintball. <laughs> Why? We're photographing a paintball tournament. Well, then let me and Dan shoot at each other. Dave. Stuff will be, if you can email me just anything so I remember after the show to email yeah, but you what back. Because I need to get it. Was, he had three Is it dates. Like April 20th? It was three different options, I believe. So I have to get back to him about that. We definitely need to shoot paintball. Some away, yeah. some in I got yeah, a yeah. ton of paintball gear. I used to love paintball. Well, can I borrow it? Uh, Paintball's fun, it was man. from when I was in like eighth grade, dude. So it's I'm telling you, probably, we, fit me. I, probably fit you. We really Extra need to tight. do a show there, and you do, you need to play as well. Yes. I would love to play. You, would, you need to play. I would, I did uh, airsoft once. It's fun. It's painful. That's why you got to wear layers, but it's fun. Uh, yes. Next, I have Kevin Santabria. He has a question. I just bought a 17 to 50 millimeter 2.8. I would love to pick up a 70 to 200 millimeter down the line. Is there a lens you would suggest to cover that gap? No, what gap? Uh, between 50 and 70, oh. maybe. So this is this is the this is an old thing that happened at the camera store all the time, where people would come in and be like, "Well, Every I have an 18 range. to 55, yeah. and then and I have a 70, 70 to 300, but what is, what's going to fill that range? Uh, Step back or forward. one foot forward? <laughs> you know, it's just like <laughs> yeah, there there's nothing. You don't need to fill the gap. Move it's kind of like asking Todd. To fill Frank's gap. <laughs> oh, <but> <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried the liquify tool in Photoshop to change it, but... I hate you. I had trouble. With you can fix- use the other thing. What's that other Photoshop tool? The content oh, the, fill? The content rate? aware scale yeah. that can I've been you showing you guys? content aware cool. of my, my pretzel tooth? Content aware scale. Yeah. Awesome. I hate you. Yeah. What else? Because we're almost uh, out. <laughs> well, I got a couple shout outs here. Juan, Juan Acosta. Shout out to him, $5. James T. Han, thank you for $10. Horror Geek, $13, $20. And again, shout out to Zach Kurtz for 50 bucks for lunch. That's like 100 bucks. That's incredible. We do appreciate you guys for yeah, doing that. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, another, let me see any more questions. Todd, how's the movie coming along? Slowly but surely. Painful <laughs> some days, some in. days not. Uh, question, does Who's Philadelphia, that question from, Todd? Does Philadelphia do a St. Patrick's Day parade, they want to know? They did it last week, last yeah. Sunday. It, the official parade? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was already Sunday. It's going to be chaos this weekend, I'm sure. It's going to be a lot of drunkards coming through. They do Aaron that. Express, that they Aaron do. Express is the dumbest thing in the world. It's so good. I don't drink, so no. Dan's exactly, gonna be, you're not going to have any fun. Dan, is Dan even going to be here Monday? Uh, Dan will be shit-faced. He's going to be Dan's still drunk probably. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he put... Irish cream in his coffee. Hell yes. Well, he's got a kid now because of his Irish cream. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> what? All what right, else, what, we what got, else we have, Todd? Todd? Last thing I got, Mark Neal just chimed in with five pounds. London, UK portraits, indoor and outdoor. One light mitifier and speed light. What would be better, a deep parabolic umbrella or a standard umbrella? This deep is a flash-related thing, I, well, I how guess. How big? Like it, You have to think how much power do you have in your flash to be able to fill up the parabolic. I know when Zach Arias was showing us doing the yeah. that, he would put like three flash heads. I think we would need to know some more information. In a standard umbrella is fine. I used to, so when Zach came to my house and did a demonstration of his one light thing, you could take one umbrella and m- turn it into like five different de- types of you options. You can do so many you things. You can shoot it open. You can sh- close it down and then direct the light. You could shoot through it. You could... Do all different types of things with one umbrella. Umbrella does a lot. So I would get one umbrella. One brawly for you in London. Huh. So uh, should we wrap it up there, guys? Yeah. I, I think, think so. Um, I think I got through uh, a lot of the things that I pulled out here. So we really appreciate you guys listening. If you haven't yes. checked out The Daily Fro, I'm on episode 50. It went up today, the 50th episode. You go to fronosphoto.com slash podcast. The phone number for that is, if you want to give me any feedback, is 267 456 Three seven. What the Jesus? Exactly. <laughs> Two six seven four five four six three seven six. You can give me a call or send me a text. Let me know what you think of those shows. Uh, what else, Stephen? You got anything? Uh, you can follow me online at s underscore Eckert on pretty much all social medias: Instagram, Twitter, everything. Tiad. You can follow me at I am Todd Wolf. 
on all social media. And also follow the movie stuff. Not much is going on there, but at Adult Land Movie. And what if they want to play you in video games? Oh, I Todd. I T O D on PlayStation. You still playing video games? I dude, I just got this boxing game on VR and it hurts my arms. It makes my arms hurt, my bird arms. Yeah. Oh, it's really cardio, good though. Right? It's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And Dan? Wait, do I cut to Dan now? I forget. There you go. There he is. There he is. There's bird arms, by the way. <laughs> All right, back to me to wrap it up, please. Take one. Ready, Jared? Take Jared. Thanks. <laughs> Actually, Ready, Jared? Take Jared. <laughs> Ready, Jared? Take Jared. So that's another Raw Talk, guys. This is 243. Uh, we appreciate you watching, joining live. It's, it's awesome to be able to have hundreds of you guys watching around the world live. If you didn't get to watch it live, you just got to watch it. You if, you, it. if you got to this point, don't forget you can download the audio portion of this. If you want to listen to it in the car, you can always do that. Watch it on your TV, wherever YouTube is available. And I'm going to call it right there. Stay safe, though. Yes. Stay safe. Remember, everyone. stay safe. Yes. Photography can be dangerous. You got to be smart. You got to think yeah. it w whatever your situation head. you're in. Yep. And that's it, guys. Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com. See ya. Click on the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. Last week's Raw Talk, you can click over here. And if you'd like to see some more Fro videos, you can click over here where it says more Fro videos. Steven, what else do you have to say? Click me. Click subscribe. me. Subscribe. Click. Ooh. Subscribe. Yes, subscribe. Subscribe. Three, two, one, and we're Bye. out.